Okay, good, every, good morning, everyone. Um, I'll go ahead and get started. And uh, the way I want to start off today uh, is to give you kind of a visualization of the conclusion of my talk. I'm going to kind of start at the end, and then I'll work back. So um, what I'm here to talk about today is a vision that I have for the future of conferences um, from, uh, a, I think, a bit of a new perspective. So this is the visualization of how I see it. Now, new efforts to inspire kids to learn math and science by engaging in after-school programs. Special correspondent Lisa Stark of Education Week reports for our weekly series, Making the Grade. Your timer, your tape. These fourth and fifth graders at Ella Risk Elementary in Central Falls, Rhode Island, are about to embark on an engineering adventure. Yeah, let's move out this thing. Someone take this one for, for the marble won't fall on it. Their job is to construct a track, then let loose a marble. Go. Oh. Here's the tricky part. So we, we put the marble and we have to make it into the goal in exactly one minute. How hard is that? Very hard. You guys are pretty good. Teacher Cheryl Wilson says this feels like a fun game, but it's really much more. The lesson scientifically was about friction, potential, kinetic energy, slope, how are you going to make it last 60 seconds? So it's a continuation of redesign, yeah, redesign, awesome. redesign, and what works and what doesn't. Oh, oh it's too hot. The tape is too slippery. The students are here because they want to be. They can sign up for this free STEM club that meets weekly after school. Now, new effort. Okay, so um, what you just saw was an example of a uh, science outreach program at a, uh, an elementary school. Um, and some of the things that you saw um, were uh, large amounts of active learning, um, people being very engaged in a new topic that they're learning for the first time. Um, and I think these are some of the things that we need to look at uh, encouraging in conference presentations. Um, so it, when you're at a conference presentation in whatever field uh, you're looking at and you're, you're giving a presentation or you're attending a uh, presentation, uh, you have some goals for uh, that program. Um, and I just uh, want us to kind of bring up some of those goals so we know where we're starting from. So to get you talking in the morning, uh, at your tables, maybe take like 30 seconds to a minute and talk about some of your goals personally when you're either giving a conference presentation or when you are uh, attending a presentation. Okay, it sounds like we have some, some good discussion going. Um, we don't have a, a bunch of time, so uh, let's see how the goals that you came up with at your tables um, align with uh, some of the goals that I've come up with myself. Um, so some of the ones that, that I've thought about beforehand here um, is, and let, let's see, just by like nod of heads or, or some agreement, uh, some of the ones I came up with are like engaging your audience. Um, you want to clearly communicate the ideas that you're coming up with or that you're wanting to talk about. Um, you have some knowledge that you want to transfer, either you're, you're giving it to someone or, or someone's giving it to you as you're sitting. Um, and lastly, um, you want your audience to take some action, either talk to you after your talk, use some of the, the methods or the ideas that you presented, uh, anything like that. Um, so now I want to ask you, how many people have been involved in, in some type of outreach? I've um, talked about science outreach a lot because that's what I'm involved in, but let's just say any type of uh, outreach in terms of informal education for, for your field. Okay, so that's a good, good amount of us. Um, so um, maybe then also at the tables, you can talk a little bit about what your goals are um, when you're doing outreach. If you're someone who, who does outreach, you can maybe tell your table. If you're not someone who does it, then maybe you can listen to what, what people at your table are saying. So take another 30 seconds or a minute to, to chat about what your goals are when you're, when you're doing some type of informal education activity. Okay, why don't we go ahead and, and compare what we've talked about um, with some of the things that, that I've come, come up with here. So when personally, when I'm doing uh, outreach, and I'll talk about that a little more in a moment, 
some of my goals are engaging the audience. I want to clearly communicate the ideas that, that I want to teach. Um, I have some knowledge that I want to transfer and um, want to inspire the audience, whether it's kids or adults or, or anything, to take some further action based on what I've told them. And maybe you can notice now that those goals are the same. Um, so I'll talk a little bit now about, about what I do and what my involvement in outreach is. Uh, so I'm, I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington, um, and I'm part of a, a program um, where we do uh, many types of informal education, but largely weekly science lessons for, for elementary students. Um, and I've been doing this for about two or three years, but I've been involved in similar activities at least throughout my educational career. Um, and so through this time, I've been able to think a lot about um, what we do in terms of outreach and, and learn from a lot of great people who do outreach too. And so what I've uh, uh, found um, is that outreach itself has um, some very important, what I'm calling pillars, um, that makes it a very effective form of uh, scholarly communication. And so my, my proposal is that we can take uh, some of these some of these pillars, some of these concepts, um, and put them together in order to uh, format a, a new way of giving uh, any type of talk or lesson in any scholarly setting. Um, and I think this especially can apply to uh, kind of revamp the way conference presentations are given. So what are these pillars? Uh, the first one, I think, is that it's hands-on. Uh, this is especially true, I think, if you're working with kids, but no matter who your audience is, um, when you have people uh, uh, using more than just uh, listening or, or seeing what you're showing them, when they're involved um, with, with touching things, with actually um, uh, interacting with some type of material, um, it's just an additional layer that uh, gets people involved and uh, helps them uh, remember and understand what you're trying to tell them. Uh, the next pillar is promoting discovery. And what that means is you're not just telling someone something. You're allowing them to discover it on your own. Um, so your uh, activities in, in terms of outreach, uh, the way that we usually arrange them, are so that students or, or I guess whoever we're uh, uh, trying to, to, to teach or engage um, are learning the lessons on their own with just guidance along the way. So they're the ones doing the discovery. Uh, the third pillar I have here is that you're personally engaging, and that means that it's uh, a, a very personal, as much of a one-on-one -on -one interaction as possible, um, instead of being a, a case of one person standing in front of uh, many. Um, maybe you're working in smaller groups, maybe you're one-on-one. -on -one. If you're the one giving a, a lesson or some type of, uh, um, some type of activity, uh, you're going, splitting your time between people so that um, everyone feels that they have some type of personal connection to you and the message that you're trying to give them. Um, and finally, and this uh, seems obvious, but um, you want what you're talking about to be accurate and factual. It's, um, even though it might be hands-on, even though it might be an activity, um, it's based in uh, whatever uh, Truth, knowledge that you know that you know and you have, and um, it's not just something uh, as a way to, to uh, get people um, interested. You want to make sure that it also follows the facts. Um, so, um, very specifically in terms of conference presentations, I think one uh, outreach activity that I do particularly fits the conference model: how you can uh, arrange conference presentations. Uh, this program is called Science Explorers at the University of Washington. It's an after-school program. It was developed by graduate students. Um, this particular program is designed for fourth and fifth graders, um, and it's just uh, a one-hour science lesson weekly, um, usually with about 20 to 22 students, but using about six or seven uh, tutors. Uh, so we're usually in groups of two to three people. And we do broad science topics. We do 
uh, earth science, engineering. Um, this uh, academic period, we're doing food science. Um, so just a broad range of topics. Um, and we've developed a very uh, specific way um, of giving our lessons. Um, so I'll just go through this lesson format that we've developed that we've found to be very effective um, in terms of uh, engaging students and getting them to uh, remember uh, information and uh, get inspired to use it um, in uh, either their own school activities or their daily lives. Um, so the way this format works, we start out with an introductory video. It's just uh, almost anything related to the topic um, that we can show on a screen. And the purpose of this step is, is simply just to grab attention um, and introduce the topic. Um, sometimes it's a broad overview of the topic. Sometimes it's something very specific about the topic. But it's just a short video that grabs people's attention and brings people together in a group so everyone's engaged. After the video, we have a, a group discussion. And this discussion is usually designed to uh, probe the students to find out how much they know about the topic. Um, and that, that helps them, again, get engaged and interested and realize um, that uh, they already have some experience with that, whatever topic you're talking about. Because pretty much with anything in, in science or, or in any scholarly field, people already have experience with it. Um, you just need to kind of uh, bring that out from them. Um, it also helps the, the people giving the lesson to understand how much they know. So if you may need to make adjustments, you can. So you're not boring people or going over their heads. The next, the next step, and the most fun and probably the most important, is some type of hands-on activity. Um, so uh, you get uh, people together in small groups. You give them something to do together um, that's, that's hands-on. Um, for example, maybe if uh, you're talking about engineering, you're maybe building a cardboard car. Um, or if you're talking about uh, biology, maybe you're making a, a model heart or, or lungs out of um, some, some tubing and a pump, things like that. <clears throat> then the next step is bringing everyone together in a group again and having another group discussion that's a summary of, of what you learned that day. Um, so this is, again, asking a lot of questions, but this time your questions are geared towards the topics that you covered and trying to understand um, what people learned, getting them to share with each other um, and share with you. And finally, to complete the kind of arc here, you close with some closing video. Again, this video is to grab attention because over the period of an hour, people tend to lose attention. And um, so it, it brings people together, allows them to, to synthesize what they learned. Um, and uh, it's just another way to, to give some small bit of information about what you're talking about or give uh, people additional information you didn't cover in the lesson. But it just puts an end to the lesson and closes the loop for them. <clears throat> um, so when we developed uh, this, uh, the process that we have, um, it's not something that anyone who's in the group now was around for, and we don't really know necessarily what the evidence behind uh, the, the building of this process was. Um, but looking back, we can now see that uh, some of the elements of this lesson format um, are based in some evidence-based practices for, for learning. Um, so it's uh, definitely a format of active learning, and active learning is uh, can be defined as anything that's not someone standing in front of someone else and just talking. So the fact that you in include videos, discussion back and forth, hands-on activities. Um, and active learning has been shown uh, to be very beneficial for undergraduate students. These graphs are showing changes in the failure rate uh, for undergraduate students when uh, they're in active learning-based courses versus lecture-based courses. Um, in addition to that, it's been found that in the K through 12 area um, that active learning is beneficial. But beyond that, it was found that it's actually more beneficial for older students, for undergraduates, ad, undergraduates than K through 12. So in our program, we found that K through 12 students benefit really well. The literature tells us that it's even more beneficial for undergraduates. 
So my question is, is this process of active learning perhaps even more beneficial for people who are beyond their postgraduate? So people uh, in our areas, people who are attending conferences. Um, so we have potentially some evidence that um, incorporating active learning into conference presentations is going to be very effective um, for you when you're giving your presentation. Uh, so now it's your turn to try it out. Um, so what I want you to do now uh, with your groups at your tables um, is pick a topic. It can maybe be something one of you at your table is involved in, or I've got some nice example topics. Uh, again, they're science related because that's my field, but you can, you can make your topic whatever you want. And just uh, have you plan out an idea for um, a lesson and just do the first three steps because it might take a little while. So decide on an introductory video. It doesn't have to be an actual video, but you can just talk about what that video might show for whatever topic you chose. Then talk about what questions you would want to ask your audience um, to, to get to know what they already know about the topic. And finally, come up with just a quick idea of some simple hands-on activity that you might be able to do. So I'll give you a couple minutes to, to chat about this. Okay, hopefully I don't cut you off too short here. Um, but if there's maybe one, one or two tables uh, who wants to share whatever they, they came up with. Any questions? I think there's one volunteer here. OK, so we were sitting around the table and said, uh, we're both working on the semantic web, and so we're not going to work on such a topic. So the topic we chose was, um, how can we make the um, ethics process more visible, more transparent. So the introductory video would be a group of people. One of them says, oh, we need this ethical approval. Ah, let's just get this stamp. Or others, uh, another uh, group would be, oh, they did this really nice research over there uh, in country A. We want to repeat this research in country B, so let's just fork their repo and then um, customize it. We can't do this for ethics. We can do it for software. And, so, and then the introductory question would really be, yeah, why is this process not open? And the hands-on activity would be sketch out the process of ethical review. What uh, does trigger the need for ethical review? Who is actually responsible for reviewing it? All these different steps until the final sentence, the research received ethical approval and all participants gave informed contents, which, uh, consent, which normally doesn't tell you anything, uh, but might involve um, making the consent form public and so on. So that's hands-on activity that people can sketch out and then lead to further discussion. Thank you. Uh, is, there, is there maybe one more table? Sample see here. There. So we discussed um, a reproducible research um, scenario or workshop. The introductory video would um, basically capture the agony of the researcher who was trying to either reproduce their own work, um, maybe doing some computation, or reproducing someone else's work uh, by kind of portraying a familiar scenario. Um, so the introductory question would be, how can you make computational research reproducible? And the exercise might depend on the level of the students. So if everyone had laptops and, and could work with some code, then maybe you could fix some code or alter some code in, in order to make, make it work. Uh, but if you were doing it in writing, you might, it might be more of a documentation exercise. How do you describe the different steps? that you have to do with some bundle of files and code in order to get something to work. OK, great. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Uh, so um, just to, to summarize, let you get a, a, a vision of that, that arc again that we're doing. Um, we determined that we've got the same goals for conference presentations and outreach. Um, and we have some effective methods for doing outreach that you can maybe apply to your conference presentations. Um, and so uh, if, uh, using these outreach techniques as a model can be, can be a very effective way. Um, so, so following the arc, um, I have a, a closing video. Um, and this closing video 
you might see is empty because I want to challenge you, if you use this technique in one of your comments presentations, send me a video of it and I can use it in a, in a future talk. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? A question. I see you, Dan. Um, so I guess I was just curious. I, when when you started this and talked about active learning, and then you talked about videos, I was fairly confused because I don't find watching a video to be active learning. And so I'm just wondering how do you, like why is watching a video active learning more than you talking would be active learning? Um, I, don't, I don't think it necessarily is. Um, so active learning is one aspect of uh, kind of the arc that I showed and that's really the discussion and the hands-on hands activity. Um, the videos are really just the attention grabbing at the beginning and I think um, screens are just usually more attractive than just starting off with your your own talking and that's kind of the point is just to, to grab attention. Okay, I think we're out of time and uh, thank you very much and uh... thank you.